Hello everyone, my name is Kitetsu and welcome back to my channel. So I just recorded this entire video and my stupid computer decided to switch my microphones. So now I'm recording it again. Lovely. But right, anyway, what I'm going to do in this video, first of all, is confirm the price of this box right here. It is going to be £110. Now, that has come from Inside Games Workshop. I know pretty much 100% that is a fact. It was leaked to me by another YouTuber, and he generally doesn't get these things wrong. So I'm really excited about that. I was pleasantly surprised. I really was expecting it to be the same price as the Sisters of Battle box set. So, you know, a little bit cheaper than that is definitely a welcome thing especially when you factor in that the uh, cavalry as a box set are probably going to be at least 30 35 pounds probably 20 pounds for the hero maybe 25 to 30 pounds for the spearman then you've got the limited edition book put it all together and it becomes a relatively decent value set now on to the actual article i want to talk about we had an article yesterday about how the lumineth realm lords play now this is one of the most bonkers crazy articles i think i have ever read the only way i can describe this faction is that they are basically a combination of warhammer 40k's thousand sons in that check this out every single model basically in this army is a wizard and they can cast and dispel magic and maybe a combination of also the dwarves from warhammer fantasy because they also look to be very very good at defense so let's check it out first of all the main kind of uh, ability behind the army is the aether quartz reserve and basically every unit at the start of the battle has one aether quartz reserve and once per phase one unit can use one of its aether quartz reserves and those can be spent on using different abilities what are those abilities you ask well we get to look at two of them here one of them is heightened senses and that allows you to add one to hit rolls like how mad is that it actually almost sounds a little bit op being able to uh, add one to hit rolls for an entire unit now hopefully because these are elves and uh, unlike the Ideneth, they're not blind hopefully they'll be hitting on a three stormcast can hit on three so i don't see why highly trained dexterous and skilled elves can't also hit on a three but in that case it means potentially they could be hitting on a two which is just madness the next one we can uh, see is called Lightning Reactions, and this is a take on uh, an ability that the Elves had back in Warhammer Fantasy. And if you didn't know about that, they always had a rule called Always Strikes First, and basically... Because Fantasy was based on initiative, the one with the highest initiative would go first. Elves ignored that and they would strike first, unless they were fighting other Elves, in which case they would then go back to their initiative scores. They were fairly lethal in that regard and it kind of worked really well because elves were like glass cannons they could dish out insane damage but they couldn't really take much back so the perfect solution is just to let them fight first but the version of that we get here lightning reactions basically when you are in the combat phase and it's your turn to pick a unit to fight you can pick two units instead of one so essentially one of those units is fighting a turn early so that's a pretty cool ability. I'm a bit more excited about heightened senses at the moment. But yeah, right. The next thing is, this is where it gets a bit complicated. The army is split into at least two different groups. One of them is called the Venari, and that comprises of the spearmen, the bowmen, and the cavalry. So the sentinels, the wardens, and the dawn riders. Sentinels are the bowmen, wardens are the spearmen up here, and dawn riders are obviously the cavalry. Now, those three different types of units together comprise the Venari, and essentially they have a special rule where if all of the models are touching at least two other models from that unit, they become something known as a Shining Company. There are various complicated mechanics involved in that, but essentially when you are a Shining Company, the enemy have to subtract one from hit rolls that target them. So the really cool thing there is basically you can have this insane shield wall filled with pikemen and behind that you've got your amazing archers your shield wall is at minus one to hit then they're going to make their armor save as well then you've got your amazing archers behind and you can use the heightened senses to add their uh, one to hit 
It's absolutely crazy and I absolutely love it. In fact, this really does kind of suit my play style and it's something that hasn't really been done in Age of Sigmar before. When I play a game like Total War Warhammer, the way I like to play them is basically have a shield wall, I wait for the enemy to come to me, they break on the shield wall and then all the time I'm harassing them with the uh, archers. So it sounds like this is going to be really effective for this army. And I've always wanted a kind of viable ranged faction. So I really hope this is going to be one of those things. But yeah, there's also a, a lot of complexity to this skill. And I think it will take a while for everyone to truly understand the mechanics on the tabletop. Because you can even start using them with Dawn Riders and stuff like that to put them at a minus one to hit you know, protecting them from incoming missile fire and stuff like that. So the Venari are one half, the other half of the army are the Alarith. And these basically are the hammer guys and all of the battle cattle. So whilst we're here as well, looking at this picture of this unit, they definitely are starting to grow on me. The poses are actually really good. The cloaks look really dynamic and amazing. And whilst I really do still wish they had two handed swords, this weapon option here definitely does look better than the normal hammers. So yeah, no, they are growing on me. I know that a lot of you didn't like the uh, cows on the top of their helmets. And uh, now you've pointed that out, I can't unsee it. It probably doesn't bother me as much as it does some of you. But if that really does bother you, it would be so easy to cut them off and add a little bit of green stuff to finish the helmets off in a kind of polished way. But yeah, they have two different abilities. The first one, Enduring as a Rock, is uh, a tribute to the fact that they come from the mountains. And basically, for the first turn of the game, they can ignore minus one rend attacks. So whilst it sounds pretty good, I guess you're going to have to really carefully think about where you deploy them and trying to get them into combat as quickly as possible to make sure that they benefit from that but it's pretty neat it's not my favorite ability in the game the next one sounds a little bit more crazy and this is the tectonic force and basically every combat phase you can pick an enemy unit within one inch of your unit as long as it's an alarith unit you can basically force your opponent to have to make a two inch move with that unit and they have to end at least one inch away from uh, any of your units and any of them that end within three inches of your Alarith units, you can then make a one inch piling move. So aside from sounding kind of crazy, it actually points out some of the real tactical benefits of that. You can move enemy units off of objectives and you can actually free up your units from combat where you don't want them to be engaged. So actually that sounds pretty neat. Now, the next thing that I'm really excited about is there are sub-factions of the Lumineth, and we have some of their allegiance abilities. Now, I have to say immediately that the first one for the Sire, it sounds ridiculously good. And at the moment, I'm going to say that this one surely is going to be the default one that you're going to take. It definitely sounds better than the one below. So first of all, all of the units start with two Aether Quartz reserves instead of one, which is already amazing. But on top of that, they have a command ability that gives them the potential to use two Aether Quartz reserves in a single turn. It's absolute madness. The next one that we see, the next sub-faction, is the Iliatha. Iliatha? Let's go with Iliatha. But basically, thanks to their unit of purpose, it allows them to use their command ability strike in unison on uh, two units at a time. And it allows you to basically re-roll hit rolls of one for those two units. So, you know, it's good, it's decent, it just definitely doesn't, to me, sound as good as this. So that's when they drop the final bombshell that everyone in the army is a wizard. So even your basic lowly pikemen can cast and dispel magic. It's, it's so mad. So each of them can unbind enemy spells, or they can use the power of Haish, a spell that boosts their excellent sun metal weapons. So the pikes that the wardens are using, if you roll a six to hit, then that's going to immediately end the attack sequence and inflict a mortal wound. What is crazy is if they cast the spell Power of Haish, they can then use that ability to trigger on a 5 instead of a 6, and that is for the entire unit. So your pikemen basically have a 1 in 3 chance of inflicting a mortal wound. It's absolutely mad. So you, when you combine these abilities, you can basically be at a minus 1 to hit for being a shining company, 
a third of your attacks are going to be dishing out mortal wounds. And then you've got archers behind that can be hitting on potentially twos. Just so much craziness going on. But this is interesting as well. The casting value is only a six, so it should be relatively easy to pull this off. But any number of Lumineth Realm Lords wizards can attempt to cast it. So you should be fairly guaranteed to make that ability go off or that spell go off. But yeah, that is our look at the rules of the Lumineth Realm Lords. And hopefully this time I recorded this on my right microphone. But yeah, let me know down below what do you think about these units and abilities and the way that they're going to play. I really like the sound of it. Does it sound a little bit OP? I'm going to say potentially no. You're going to have to find ways to counter it, but I'm guessing that the... Models are again going to be a little bit glass cannony and relatively easy to take down, which is probably why they've given them that massive buff of the minus one to hit for the shining companies. But yeah, anyway, I'm going to leave this video here. Hopefully I can have time to finish editing both this video and the golden hammer award video. But anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys really soon.